Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I will continue my discussion on AWS Lambda and DynamoDB. And today's focus will be creating data with Lambda in AWS DynamoDB. So in my last couple of videos, I initially discussed about Lambda and then how we can access a Lambda through API Gateway. And then I discussed how we can get data from DynamoDB through AWS Lambda and API Gateway. I'm going to share the link for the videos in the description of this video below you can check out i will strongly suggest to go through those video before you start looking into this video to get the context and the complete flow so this is the lambda which i used earlier which has this user provider which was getting some user data from a user table in dynamodb and this is the dynamodb user table that i have and as you can see it has a couple of items city email address and phone number for today's video what i did is i went ahead and created a new AWS Lambda. This is the Lambda function. Currently, it doesn't have any useful code. It is just a function. It is taking API gateway proxy request as a request along with the Lambda context and API proxy response is the response it is returning. This both of these using API proxy request and response is something which I discussed in my last video. This is to get the request object and the associated query string or request body from the API gateway. So this is what we are going to use today to get the request body, then convert it into a C-sharp object and then add it back into DynamoDB. So for that, I'm going to create an object which will have city, email, address and phone number just like the object here. So I'm just going to copy paste this class into the other Lambda function. So here I'm going to create the same user class. Now when you are dealing with production application, you might create a common .NET NuGet package for all the model and then the model can be shared across multiple Lambda functions. Now the user object is created. Next thing what we are going to do is we're going to create a new class called user creator and before I go there what I have also done is I also added the AWS SDK DynamoDB. This is the NuGet package that we need to access all the APIs for DynamoDB and I also added the AWS .Lambda API gateway events which is what from where we are getting the classes API gateway proxy request and API gateway proxy response. Now I'm going to go and create a new class and I'm going to name the class as user creator and in this class I'm going to create a public async bool create user and it's going to take the it's going to take the user object and then here we are going to use the DynamoDB functionality. Now to use the DynamoDB what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a constructor and in the constructor I'm going to accept uh, I Amazon DynamoDB interface and if you have watched my previous videos before you already know where this interface is coming from. It is coming from Amazon DynamoDB V2. Next one I'm going to do is I'm going to create a field for DynamoDB. So here after we get the DynamoDB object what we want to do is here DynamoDB object has put item async. If you see the put item async definition it says create a new item or replace the new item. If the new item that has the same primary key as the key in the item already exists. The new item completely replaces the existing item. So this is what we are going to use for creating a new item and as you can see the put item async method takes put item request as an input parameter. So first what we are going to do is we are going to create a request object which is going to be new put item request and put item request is part of the amazon.dynamodb.model namespace and in the put item request what we are going to do is there are two items which are important here first one is table name which is user underscore table and the second one is the item and as you can see item is a dictionary of string and attribute value in our case we have 
four different attributes which are cd email address and phone first we start with cd and then new attribute value and as you can see it has a string or string array or empty in our case it's a string so we are going to pass user dot cd and this has to be like this and then the second item is cd then email Again, same thing email and i'll just copy paste the next to address address and then phone phone so these are the four attributes and then here i'm going to pass the request object and do a await on this and response is equal to this and for the return response http status code and we are going to return http status code is equal to if it is equal to okay then it will return true otherwise it is going to return false so this has to be task of pull and I'm going to use the system dot threading dot task namespace. This looks right about correct. The other thing we can do for attribute value is instead of using the constructor, what we can do is we can just use attributes like this. If you remember, this is how we were accessing the value on the way out. So instead of this, we could have done the s equal to user dot cd here. So I'm going to leave one of them like that, just to show you two ways of doing it. And then I'm just going to create a constructor as a standard practice that I always do. And then finally, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to do var user is equal to json convert dot let me install the newton soft dot json because I don't have it installed already. Once it is installed, I'm going to go here and I'll add the namespace newton soft dot json and I can do newton soft dot deserialize and deserialize into user object for the request.body and if user is equal to null then just return new api gateway response and here status code is equal to bad request so 400 otherwise we'll create bar user creator equal to new of user creator and create a new DynamoDB client. Let me just add the namespace. And as I mentioned in my previous video, if DynamoDB client is created with default constructor, it automatically picks up the role which is defined as a part of the Lambda function. And if you remember in my previous Lambda function, I had the role. So if I open up Lambda function here, so for opening up Lambda function, you can just type Lambda in the search bar up top. I'm going to open it in a new tab and then this is my new function this is my old function which is used for get and this is what we are going to use for create now this is right now again this doesn't have any meaningful code but we are going to upload the latest code and if we go into the configuration in the permission we see that the lambda demo role and if you remember lambda demo role something which has all the permission needed to access DynamoDB so now let's get back to the function so it will automatically pick up that role and then it will be able to access DynamoDB for execution all the actions that we want it to do. I can do user creator dot create user pass the user object and if it is success then return this if this is success then return this else return 
new API gateway response again status code is going to be for the time being 400 bad request so that's the function it's a pretty simple and straightforward function we are not doing anything complex We're just getting the object the json object converting into a c sharp object then calling the user creator create user method and let's change the name of this method because it's an async method and as a standard practice all async method i prefer to suffix with async so let's just do that here as well so we call this create user async and it uses the put item async to create a new item in our case or update an existing item if the item with the same key exists so now that this function is ready let's try to rebuild and deploy this function back into aws now this function will have all the necessary code now i'm going to go to the command prompt and i'm going to execute this command which is dot net lambda deploy function then the function name profile and region this is a command i have been using in last few videos so if you have watched them you should be familiar with this but this is the command which is used for deploying a lambda into the aws cloud and as we can see the command is successfully executed it has updated the existing function and now if we go back to the lambda we can see that the lambda is updated 24 seconds ago now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to api gateway and if you remember in my last video for the post also i had integrated the same lambda function for the post as well now here is what i'm going to change instead of lambda demo which was the previous function which i used for just showing the data from the existing DynamoDB table i'm going to now select the dynamo create function which is the one which will be used for creating the function so once I do that, now this post method is pointing to dynamo create function. So now I can click on test and in the request body, I can provide CT is NYC and then address is one, two, three, new street. Then email is, and let's keep them proper naming format for JSON. And the email is, and then finally phone is going to be, so this is what we use. And I'm going to execute the test here. And once I execute the test, as you can see, the test is executing and we see the response has no data. This is what we sent as a request body and the message came back as 200. Let's go here in the DynamoDB table and refresh and we can see new data is added to the table as expected. And we can also, what we can do is we can go back to the API and we can execute the get method as well. And from the get, if we test, we should see all the three rows coming back in the response and we can see here all the three rows and we can also create a stage as we did last time and the stage name we're going to keep prod now if i click on the url here for the prod stage it should just execute and here i can see all the three rows are showing us as expected and this is something we can execute through postman as well as well as the post method we saw could be executed through postman as well so this is all i wanted to cover for today i wanted to show how easily you can use another lambda function to create data into dynamodb table in very few minutes and how we can associate an api gateway request to get 2.21 lambda and post 2.2 another lambda and do a couple of function so easily if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video